Hey guys, Dave from Nerdarchy, four nerds by nerds hanging out with Nerdarchist Ted. And today we talk about how one GM made me hate Pathfinder, but the other one made me love it. Jump down to the description below where you can sign up for Nerdarchy's newsletter, get weekly gaming tips, as well as learn how to game with Nerdarchy. So we, we want to talk about and kind of retell some stories that we've picked up over the years, things that we've learned from playing in this hobby, different role-playing games, experiences we've had, yada, yada, yada. <laughs> All right. So we're, we're, we're diving pretty heavily into Pathfinder on this one, right? Uh, yes. This one is going to be Pathfinder because that's the example we're going to go with. Early on in our Nerdarchy career, we actually played in a Pathfinder game and it you know, was flavored with Dark Sun. One of the th things that was done in that game really just turned me off to, to Pathfinder. And there, it was just an, a mitigating factor. Like, one, the combats tend to be really long. Mm -hmm. And, and I, you know, and this isn't, I don't think this is going to be, this is specifically Pathfinder. But it might have been, like, the GMing style. It, hap it happened in that system, so, right. it, so it's complicit. And it's actually, you know, it's flavored us in a certain degree. And every single time that someone, you know, wants to talk about Pathfinder, typically, like, my brain remembers, oh, well, the last encounter in Pathfinder that I had, the combat took an hour and a half. I don't, And it wasn't fun. Right. I don't think about all of the factors leading into that combat. I don't think about any of the other combats that happened. This is just, this is the, 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 the taste that's in my mouth. And even though it's been three years, you know, it's still there. Right. So the DM. So let's set the stage a little bit. The GM, DM. They set. They set up this gotcha kind of scenario. Like these, the players messed up. I'm going to teach them a lesson. Mm -hmm. Right. And and so you know we had to face this psionic dragon creature that looked more like a, a bone bone snake. Right. Right. From Dark Sun, and it had a lot of range capability and had an obscene amount of distance it could get. Yes. And we had a melee party. And only one of us chose to actually pick up a missile weapon. Right. And it was like the most melee of the characters that had it. <laughs> you know, and so, and the, the battlefield is just the open desert. Exactly. So there, there wasn't uh, any of the typical things that, you know, DMs would be able to put out there. Like, you know, normally you want to, as a DM, if a, if a player asks something you want to say find a way to say yes and we've done a video on the three ways to do it um so if you're in an alley you know oh can i find a barrel to duck behind can i find something to get cover a lot of times when players ask these kind of things you you want to do that well when we're on an open stretch of desert there's nothing for cover there's nothing that i can i can find that i could use as an improv weapon there, there was literally nothing we could do but either run and get pelted by this thing or try to find a way to engage it in some way shape or form right so in this scenario like we had two thrycreens so they became invalid targets just because they would just deflect the missiles uh the other characters had were a little bit more uh, i don't know if they were higher ac but the the one character that actually had the ranged weapon and again was the most melee of the characters it was a heavy crossbow it was large. It did a decent amount of damage, but you can only fire it every other round. Right. And that became the logical target for the enemy. Right. So I have no problem with like setting your you know, setting a disadvantage for your players, but you have to kind of give them options and alternatives. So this kind of like this was like our last game of Pathfinder we played, and we haven't touched it since. And you know, the combats in that game were just so long. That kind of that kind of turned us off, and it also flavored how we how we run things now going forward with yes, our games. Exactly. So we learned a lot from that. Now, fast forward three years from then, and you know, me and staff writer Doug actually playing a different Pathfinder game, where this was at Origins, right? Yeah, this was at Origins with Stefan Rowe, where like he's an was a, an amazing GM. And you know, and he was also running a really good adventure, mm -hmm. uh, pre-written adventure. I know we kind of bash those. We don't bash them. We just don't really run them. But it was it was just a really interesting pre-written adventure. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and it it took place in essentially in these Cthulian like monsters that are frozen in time. There's two of them locked in battle. They literally have wounds. And there's these crazy goblins in this desert that follow that find these things and then build their homes on them. 
and, and you know the the GM is like I like to imagine the fact that they're frozen in time but they still move but it's like tectonic plates moving mm. you know so it's like so subtle and it's so it the movement is so small it's not noticeable from you know moment to moment or movement to movement but if you over the course of like 10 years yes <laughs> You know, so there's like all these rickety bridges, there's tunnels built through the monsters, you know, so it was a ton of fun. So there was all, there was all these environmental things going on that, and, and the way, and the way the GM ran the monsters, you know, our, our final battle had so much tension in it. Like there was an artifact that one of the monsters had, there was like monsters fighting monsters around us. These were like, uh, there was literally floating island chunks of flesh because they were locked in battle and pieces of them went flying when it happened mm -hmm. so they just start stuck there in midair right and some of them had rope bridges on them and some of them just had ropes so like we're jumping you know we're jump jumping back and forth from these floating islands or running across the ropes we're using the bridges you're trying to knock enemies off you know there's the big bad who has this artifact that we're trying to steal from them and then it becomes like a game of keep away and we're, and we're like uh and then in the meantime there's also the dra this dragon that's coming in in the distance and once it gets here end game we're first level characters you know that being said like okay so it's pathfinder and there's more modifiers to track and there's more numbers but overall for the enjoyment of the game it didn't matter at all well i mean we we've, we've talked about uh, you know, in other videos and much more so off camera, that the rule system is only the interaction with typically combat. You can role play using any particular setting, and if the story is good, the mechanics wind up being secondary. Well, and not only that, like in this case, where you know Pathfinder is more rules heavy. This particular GM was using the rules to try and find ways to say yes and make things interesting for the players. Mm -hmm. Where in the previous encounter, it was more like the GM was trying to use the rules as a, as a bludgeon to tell, to tell us how much we effed up and how we're playing the game wrong. Mm. And, you know, and all the mistakes we made, which is only frustrating and it's not fun. Correct. So, so really... It doesn't matter how many rules or how few rules are actually in the game. It's how they're used. Th that's the crux of the matter. That, you know, that, that does, you know, you know, paint heavily onto, onto the scene. Where if you're typically going to reward your players and play a game based off of the, the, the players and the characters that are at your table, everyone's going to have more fun. Uh, it, it never should be... You know, uh, as we've said, like the battle lines are drawn and it's the DM versus the players. Yeah, I mean, in the first scenario, I would have rather within the first 10 minutes, the GM just be like, you're all dead. It's just going to keep pelting you guys and you're dead, so you're dead and there's no place to run. Like, like at that point, that would have been far more interesting to me than going through an hour and a half of just being frustrated and be like, this is a, this is kind of a jerk move. You know, you know, what's the point? Or if you're going to do that, be like, oh, well, there's crevices you can run and hide in. There's a cave. Right. You can, you can use an encounter like that to drive players to a side quest, to, you know, something that would wind up, you know, you can drive them towards something that's going to wind up being a greater reward. Uh, like, there, there's times that it's not a, it's not a jerk move or a dick move to... Move the story so, forward. Move the story forward or push push the characters in a direction that they didn't see. Um, you know, and examples like like that are littered in the Lord of the Rings books, where the, the, the play the, the players, yeah. The characters are driven in a direction that they weren't initially intending to go. But right, the mountain pass is closed. What are we gonna do? Oh, we'll go through the mountain. Oh, this sucks. There, you know, <laughs> there's all these awful things through the mountain. But like yeah, bad stuff can happen, but it's it's you know when these situations you want it to be adding to the story, not adding to the negativity of the situation. Right. So essentially, what it comes down to: if I do this thing, if I use the rules in this way, is it going to be inter ultimately interesting and or fun? Mm -hmm. Right. A chase scene where we had objectives would have could have been fun. Right. Right. But. In an open field where there's no place to get to, nor is a run for the, as far as the eye could see, 
there, there's there's no possibility for that. Uh-huh. You know, so there was nothing to interact with. You know, so that that's the key. Like when you're making a decision as a GM, and in this, it doesn't really matter if you're playing Pathfinder, Fifth Edition Dungeons and Dragons, Cipher System, you know, whatever you're playing. Are the choices I'm making as the GM that I'm going to kind of like put on my players? Are they going to make the game more fun and more interesting? So, what what do you guys think? Have you come across situations like this? Um, you know, is there anything that you have stories that would be awesome to, to to share that have either pushed you away or pushed you towards something? There's a great place to continue that conversation it's down in the comments below. While you're down there, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Check us out over on Facebook. So, until next time, stay, stay nerdy. nerdy.